I'm skipping the intro. We're keeping things informal for this one. Welcome to my i3 versus i5 MacBook Air 2020 comparison. Today, we're going to be monitoring temps and frequency and battery life as we do some performance-oriented tests. So both of these are at 100% battery capacity. And uh, yeah, without wasting any more time, let's get started here with a Geekbench 5 test. So I'm going to open this up on both and we're going to do a CPU test first. And of course, we will be monitoring the frequency and the temperature, seeing if there's any thermal throttling or anything. And before anybody thinks I have something for Care Bears, this is my sister's laptop. She has this stupid plastic thing on here. And also she put this pretty cool back covering so she doesn't scratch the bottom here. But uh, yeah, I have a naked gold one. I am not about, you know, ruining my mac experience with some dumb accessories so i thought i would point that out okay so the test is about to be done and i've noticed throughout this um the temperatures seem to be higher with the quad core not by a whole lot but by enough especially starting out the quad core did get hotter at first and now both are kind of reaching like the high 80 threshold, but it's staying cooler with the i3 model. And the frequency is jumping all around here. It's maxing out at 3.2 and see it just went down to 2.6. Over here, similar numbers with 2.2. So this seems to be a bit lower. So I'm looking over here, it just, it just jumped back to like three. Over here, it's around like 2.2 as this test is almost finishing. So yeah, uh, it does appear that there is some amount of, you know, thermal throttling here happening. Um, so we got 1074 single core, 2391 multi-core with the i3. This is about to finish because I clicked it later, by the way. And here we have the score for the i5 model, 1076 and 2959 here. Okay, I have it in focus. So yeah, there's definitely a performance jump, but in single core tasks, it's not gonna be that much different apparently here. And I can't really look at the, you know, like the temps and everything now because the, you know, CPUs are not under load. But yeah, so far it seems like the i5 model was heating up a bit more and it was having some lower max frequency levels or whatever. Okay, so next up, I'm going to open up Cinebench 20 on both of these and we're going to see how the frequency and the temperatures are performing. Both of these laptops are still at 100%. So power efficiency seems to be pretty okay, but keep in mind that was just one performance test. So I'm going to um, run this once it's ready. The fan speeds are already ramping up in the quad core. Although we are a little bit farther along in the processing, I do believe here. Um, so let's look at what's happening over here. So the temperature has already reached 99 degrees. Over here, similar temps, so it's not necessarily cooler, uh, but we'll also look at the frequency here. It says max 2.5, we'll watch this for a minute. 2.5, it's staying at 2.5, average 2.4. If we look at the frequency over here, max 1.7, max 1.6, average 1.59. So I am seeing some thermal throttling apparently here. It's running each core at a lower frequency. And keep in mind, if you have more cores running at the same time, they are gonna get more done. So I'm not saying this is gonna perform less than the i3, but each core is being clocked a bit lower, probably because of temperature concerns and cooling concerns or whatever, because because we know like Macs don't have the best reputation in regard to thermals here. So yeah, we'll continue to monitor stuff. And I will note here that utilization is pretty interesting here. We're at 87% with the i5 versus 49.78%. So I don't know. That's that's kind of weird. I don't know too much about like CPU architecture and all of that. Maybe someone could explain that. But I will say here we are a little bit farther along in the rendering benchmark with the i5 model. So it is performing better. And here's something really interesting. The i3 model is already down to 97% doing these intensive tasks, whereas the i5 model is now at 99%. And my hunch is that like each core in the i5 processor is being ran, you know, at a lower frequency, which is preserving battery life versus, you know, the dual cores in the i3 are, you know, really being utilized and pushed. Although once again, the core utilization is not near 100%, which is super weird, but still, um, I had these both plugged into 100%, you know, I had them both charging and it seems like, you know, this is doing 2% better so far, but I'll, you know, keep tabs on that and let you know how that goes. All right, and we'll compare the results here in Cinebench. We have 713 points with the i3 model and 946 points with the i5 model. So significant gains here. This 
this did finish a lot quicker albeit though the processor cores were ran at a lower frequency but you have to keep in mind there's you know four cores and eight threads versus two cores and four threads so it does make a difference performance wise but yeah and again i will remind you that throughout this test the temperatures were pretty much the same you know high 90s here but from what i saw the frequencies remained pretty consistent but we'll do some you know longer rendering or longer tests here but before we do that i want to actually do pretty much a solely battery oriented test here we're going to do some video playback for like 10 minutes in 4k or actually you know what i have to download chrome for that never mind we'll go into a safari and watch some 1440p video and see how battery drains with both of these processors psych i'm using chrome it was capped at 1080p with safari so i'm like nope so we're at 93% with the MacBook Air i3, and then we're at 96%, about to be 95% with the i5 MacBook Air. So I'm gonna put this in full screen. I'm gonna put this at max brightness and get back to you in like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes here. All right, 15 minutes later here, let's pause the 4K and let's see how they're doing battery wise. But, but battery wise. <coughs> um, so the i5 MacBook Air is at 89%, whereas the i3 MacBook Air is at 86%. So still there's like a two to 3% lead here. The next test that I wanna do is um, kind of intensive and it is Unigen Heaven. I wanna run this for a minute here so we can really get an idea of, you know, what thermal throttling might look like. And instead of actually getting a benchmark, because I think I've done that before, I am just going to run this and just have it running in the background. So similar story compared to before, we have higher max and average frequencies with the i3 processor and lower frequencies with the quad core here, the i5. Also something I'm noticing is that uh, it seems like the i5 is drawing less power overall. Maybe it doesn't look like that because I just sort of like went back and forth, but so far I've just, just from my eye, just darting back and forth really quickly, I've seen that, that this is sipping power just a bit more here. And that makes sense because each core is at a lower frequency and the temperatures here are very similar as well. 99.5 here, we, we go over here, just hit hundred with the i3, so both are pretty toasty if you ask me. Okay, so I just checked the Apple website. Max frequency here is 3.2. Max frequency here with the i5 is 3.5, although we haven't seen any of that in this real world test here. We have max one gigahertz as of right now per core versus max 1.5 with the i3 model here. And I get it, I'm not plugged in, so they're trying to conserve power as well, but I'm doing this because A, I wanna monitor just how performance or you know heavy tasks affect the battery and also, when you're doing stuff like this, you're not always plugged in. So this is for those people as well. And let's compare battery life real quick here. We are at 84% with the i5 model and 81% with the i3 model. Once again, this laptop seems to be drawing more power and this laptop a bit less so. Okay, next up, let's do a real, real world test here. With Photoshop, I have two seven by five inch, 300 PPI compositions, and we're gonna import some photos just to see how fast each of these laptops take. By the way, same RAM, same type of storage, everything, just different processors. So I will drag in the first, you know, top five images here, and let's just see. Um, we'll check the temperature and the frequency here real quick here. So we're at, uh, what are we doing here? Max frequency 1.4 as of right now with the i3 model, temperature 55 degrees. Then we have the i5, max frequency 1.4, 1.2, temperature 63-ish. So kind of closer to 65, this is running hotter. Anyway, I just bumped the camera. Let me drag in some images real quick. So we'll do it with the i3 model first. Okay, and I'll click check. Okay, and then I'm gonna do it with the i5 model over here next. And it took about the same time, all right. So no huge difference there, I guess, although this was a different photo, but still they're a similar size, similar format. It should be similar. Sometimes there can be a bit of a delay if you're you know, under load or if you're using a lower powered device, but so far, so good here. Let me adjust, I don't know, some curves right quick. We'll see what happens in real time. It should adjust pretty quickly. So, you know, I'm like, bringing it around, you know, doing some real time. It's just a tiny bit of a delay, but that's pretty normal. Even with like my 5K iMac, for example, I'll click cancel and I'll do the same thing over here. We'll go to adjustments and then curves. Bring this over here, same deal. And there's pretty much the same amount of delay. I'm not noticing any difference. There might be like a millisecond more or less here, but yeah, so far so good. 
Uh, a little challenging thing I like to do is with filters. Like, I don't you know, even like my 5K iMac has trouble with these sometimes. So I'll go to filter gallery. I'm going to apply, let's just do dry brush here and see how the i3 model does. Okay, took a minute here. We'll do film grain. Okay, poster edges. See how it takes a minute to render out? Sponge. Okay, sponge is kind of more difficult. Let's try it out with the quad core. Okay, under painting. Go back over here. We'll do watercolor with the i5. Okay, that was pretty quick. We'll do watercolor over here. Similarly quick colored pencil. That took a second. We'll do colored pencil over here. I'm not noticing too much of a difference, but if you can let me know in the comments, cut out. Okay, that was quick. Cut out. Okay, dry brush again. And then dry brush. Yeah, so in Photoshop here doing some, you know, more intensive stuff, it appears that, you know, both perform pretty well. I honestly assume that it would be a little bit better on the i3 model because, you know, you have two cores that are clocked higher more of the time. But as you can see here, performance is pretty similar. I'm not going to be the end all be all person to determine this. But from what I can tell on these real world tests, that seems to be the case. And while we're at it, we're at 78% with the i3 model and 80% with the i5 model. So once again, it appears that the i5 model is power sipping a bit more. And now let's open up Final Cut Pro, an application I use every single day or almost every day, you know, whenever I'm working really. And we're going to create a little, you know, 4K project here, render some stuff out and of course export to see which one, you know, wins. We can probably guess which one is going to. I've already done this test, but for the sake of this video, I want to do it again. But more so, I want to monitor just the frequency and the temperature here. And here we are with both. Let's do some playback real quick with the i3 model. And as you can see, both are playing back just fine no skipped frames they have the same integrated graphics so that has to do with it as well but also this is a cpu intensive task but yeah 4k video playback if i scroll this way immediate response you know i can go to anywhere i want and we're we're cooking with peanut oil or whatever the saying is uh let's add an effect or you know what multiple so i'm going to go over here with my i3 model and i am going to add let's just say 50s tv and then like, uh, how about, how about Aura? Okay, so both of those, and this looks like crap, but it still has to apply the effect, right? And I'll do the same thing over here. Uh, so it's rendering it out. Let's go back to full screen and see if playback is okay. So we're having some drop frames here. Same thing happening over here. Let me go to like the middle here so we can kind of have a point of reference. Um... Yeah, it seems equally shaky, equally not as smooth on both here. Uh, I would assume it'd be a bit better here, but uh, with my naked eye, I'm not noticing that much of a difference in video playback. So that is interesting here. Let's also monitor the temperatures and the frequencies real quick. Uh, so if we go over here, we're looking at max. It was just at 2.2, but now it's 1 1.6, 1 1.5, 1.6. Max temperature is 93, you know, lower 90s. Over here with the i5, on the other hand, it's right up there at almost 100% or 100 degrees or Celsius, by the way, or excuse me. <laughs> Frequency is a bit lower, though, I will say here. Max 0.7, bets back up to 1, but as you can see here, it's lower overall. And now let's actually export here. So I'm going to export. You know what? I'm going to do H.264 because I know that's more difficult for the processors. All right, so I'm about to press save on both. So I'll put the camera down in three, two, one, save. All right, so now we can watch the progress and the temps here. And my AC is about to come on. And no, I'm not going to turn it off like I normally do because it is getting hot in here. I like these laptops. <laughs> we are at max 1.6, max 1.7 ish frequency with the i3 over here. We're actually higher than normal, I would say so. We're max 1.6, a little bit lower though than the i3, I will say, it seems like. Temperature right up at 100. Um, the temperature with the i3 is a bit, is a few degrees lower, I would say, although it is approaching 100 here. Core utilization around, let's just see where it goes here. Mid 30s, I saw 40 a minute ago. Core utilization with the i5 is actually lower, interestingly enough here. Uh, and here we are, we're only 2% done with the i5 model. 3% done with the i3 model so far, uh, but we will see in the past, I've done a similar render test in the i5 one, but we'll see just by how much or whatever. Um, but still full brightness and everything. We'll do a little battery 
test or excuse me check here 74 percent versus 77 percent so we have a three percent lead with the i5 here once again core utilization is higher with the dual core and like I don't know why it isn't higher with the quad core here, but maybe that has to do something about the temperature. Like if the cores were being used more, then they would be drawing more power and they'd be at a higher frequency. And then this laptop would overheat and shut down. So it appears, and this might not be the most educated, you know, assumption or, you know, assertion. So feel free to correct me, but it appears that yes, the thermal issues or the thermal, you know, engineering here is limiting how powerful this processor can be or how powerful or how much in use these cores can be before this laptop, you know, overheats. Because as you can see here, once again, the temperatures are pretty much the same, albeit the utilization is different. Okay, a few minutes later, both of these laptops are struggling to export this with two effects. We're at 27% here with the i3. 29% with the i5 so better performance though but not by much at least in this test so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop the rendering here i'm going to stop sharing it i'm going to remove the effects and see what happens and then i'm going to cap the clip at like a minute and we're just going to do a quick little render test here to see which one will render faster just you know more raw footage because that's kind of what people do they might do a little bit of color correction but that's about it and i'm going to enter on both three two one go okay let's check the progress so eight percent with the i3 i don't know why i'm doing that I can zoom in we're at 16 percent with the i5 23 percent with the i5 21 percent with the i3 let's check out the actual frequency and temperature 1.7 with the i3, 1.4, 1.5 with the i5, 99-ish, you know, 99, almost 100 degrees with the i5, same thing for the i3. Utilization is, of course, higher with the i3 for some reason, but things are chugging along a bit more quickly with the i5 model here. Let's just see which, you know, video is done rendering first. Okay, it's done over here. 93% over with the i5. Uh, i3 i keep mixing up i3 and i5 but here we go as you can see here a bit quicker with the i5 model but not by much although i will say i did do a 1080p render test with my sister for one of her videos and it did make a big difference it took about half the time to render a 1080p clip that's like 30 minutes long compared to this so the longer your clip the faster this processor is going to be like you'll notice it with longer clips or longer videos but in terms of shorter projects, um, they're going to be similarly performing, I would say. So kind of sad how you cannot take full advantage of the quad core here with this higher end MacBook Air, clearly for some power and thermal reasons. Although I will say you shouldn't be buying a MacBook Air to do anything super intensive anyway. And after all of this testing here, we are at what? 64% with the i3 and 66% with the i5. So yes, it appears that the i5 model, at least in my test, is a bit more power efficient perhaps due to the lower clock cores overall um in terms of temperature as we saw temperatures were definitely a bit higher with the i5 model which may have you know limited its performance here this definitely didn't clock as high as the i3 once again here this had higher clock speeds if i already said that i feel like i'm talking in circles i've been repeating i3 i5 i3 i5 for the past hour so forgive me here so yeah hopefully this gave you some insight here um honestly i'm gonna stick with the i3 model i'm very happy with how it performed here i kind of think that you know until apple switches over to arm based processors which is coming soon actually they should just stick with dual core they should have stuck with dual core but it's kind of nice to have a quad core in the air except i just don't think you're going to take that much advantage of it because of the thermal you know engineering in this you know very thin and light laptop so know that this will perform a bit better but not a whole lot better to justify it i think personally for my usage case you know for like light photoshop and typing or whatever i might consider a ram up upgrade before a processor upgrade uh and also you know increasing storage over a processor upgrade so keep that in mind here um but you know if you are doing more video editing like i said you know longer projects then i would recommend buying the i5 model it really does come down to what you're doing but yeah long story short here hotter definitely more thermal throttling i would say from my experience a bit higher performance, a bit better battery life actually here. But once again, this is really impressive. I'm very impressed with the i3 processor in this lower end MacBook Air. So that about wraps things up here, this informal test. Once again, hopefully this helps you out in your purchasing journey. I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions. And of course, subscribe for more content like this. 
And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.